loved ones or random stranger or just someone that you need to, them to get your business done. Everyone needs help once in a while. And unfortunately, there are some people that will take advantage of that need. And so that's why we're watching today's video by Upper Echelon. Let's educate ourselves, shall we? This is an imaginary opening theme song. Theme song. Oh. This video is brought to you by Incogni, which is actually kind of fitting given the subject matter. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. What is BetterHelp? Odds are a lot of people watching this have actively seen advertisements for the service here on YouTube, maybe yeah. Facebook or elsewhere. Loosely understanding it to be an online therapy application for matching patients with licensed professionals. Pretty simple. The ads paint a picture of something mm -hmm. kind or approachable, and the sponsorships they authorize talk about how burnout is a really difficult process and how help is just a few clicks away. But with tens of millions of dollars pouring into the YouTube ecosystem, hundreds and hundreds of videos promoting the service. Mm -hmm. I mean, I doubt you would, you know, try to show people like a really intense video and be all like, you better get the help today, otherwise you'll be in trouble, you know? I don't think it would go well for most people so of course they're going to try to you know show people like a calm peace and then lure down suspected people and then just quit to grab their money and a rapidly growing list of creators affiliated with them i wanted to examine the full scope of this service because it's not quite what people think it is and prospective customers need to be aware of that to do this we need to go back in time 2018 was many things, some mm -hmm. good, some bad, but relevant for today's video, 2018 was the time frame when BetterHelp initially found traction on the platform yeah, by sponsoring was six a very years large ago. number of YouTube creators. These creators would very often talk about how valuable the service is. They would draw connections to their own personal lives or express their own struggles, which is fine. People mm -hmm. can promote things that they also believe in. Yeah. Except there was a bit of a discrepancy between what was being said about the company and what users were actually experiencing. Uh -oh. Anecdotal evidence is overly abundant here, but the gist of it then, and still today now, is that many users were complaining about unnecessary fees. Yeah, so, like for instance, this is no, no way to hate on the team. I know trying to do great things with their platform according to self-help. By all means, get that bag, but as a licensor, myself and a former client of better help just to try it, it's a horrible, unethical, unprofessional service. I mean, you're being way too nice, you know, you just should say stay away, you know, you don't have to be all nice to people about it, you know, just say your opinion without the niceness, it's, it's fine. I mean, I get they're probably trying to show especially professional courtesy because they say that they're a therapist themselves, but yeah, if it's bad, it's bad, okay? Difficulty canceling subscriptions or problems with the service that left them completely unsatisfied. As an example, users who actively subscribed to the platform often had enormous difficulty canceling that subscription. They were repeating- Yeah, like right here, quit therapy and then don't quit because, you know, green is always better than red, right? Isn't that why you did it like this? The color scheme and all that, right? Especially. But also, you know, like apparently even if you do click <laughs> quit therapy, you have to do it like at least three to four times. So every time they're just all like, do you, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? You know, like. If a service is not as easy as just clicking a get out of the service and then be done with it completely and then never be charged back or anything like that, if it's not like that, then you know there's a huge problem. Or at least, you know, if it goes beyond like two times of asking the same thing, there's probably something fishy going on. Repeatedly required to confirm their intentions and faced with things like this. Typically when you go to buy something or cancel something, Green means yes, do the thing I'm trying to do, and red means no, I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Also, buttons to the left typically denote cancellation or go back, and buttons on the right signal confirmation or go forward. Better help, even though this is a relatively small item in the grand scheme of things for the video, would pretty blatantly try to trick their customers into hitting the green button on the right, which would then actually halt the process of cancellation because the goal wasn't convenience or satisfaction, the goal was I to mean, they want that money, you know, and also look at what it says down here, right? The natural continue button when I'm subscribing is the cancel don't quit button. You also have to press quit therapy four times to actually stop your subscription. Yeah. <laughs> In case you wonder why I was saying it like that as well. If no one noticed the bottom part. Mm -hmm. Like, sheesh, man, sheesh, four times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Manipulate their user base into remaining on the platform with an active subscription, which would then continue to rack up charges even in their absence. Something else we can look at to kind of help showcase this is that even last year, that being 2023, BetterHelp dispersed $93 million in refunds, which constituted 8% of their entire revenue stream. 
It's difficult to find direct comparisons for that figure, but it's worth noting that the number of people who actually pursue and complete a refund process, especially a difficult one, is substantially mm -hmm. lower than the number of people who are overall dissatisfied with any given service. Which Yeah, plus who knows how long they had to fight for that refund, you know? I don't think it was just all like, oh, they, okay, they cancel it, they went through all the hassle, and then, well, they got their money back in like maybe three to seven business days, three to five business days, I don't know. Normally, you know, they say it takes a while, right? Like a week or two. Who knows how long <laughs> afterwards did the people actually get their, you know money back even though it's like a big a uh, number to most of us i'm sure like 93 million is not like something to sneeze at but when the numbers get way too up you know sometimes they just feel very surreal but like think about it i don't think one or two people paid the 93 million right that they got refunded like who knows how many thousands of people paid that and then you know finally got some of it back or something begins to put things in perspective you don't have to look very far to start finding many more clues about what kind of company this actually is, but try this one on for size. After a pretty horrifying tragedy took place at a festival called Astro World in Houston, there's a 1,200-page police report about what happened, which is pretty chilling, honestly, but the gist of it is that a hyped-up crowd compressed in on itself at a concert, and multiple people died as a result of that. After that tragedy occurred, BetterHelp mm -hmm. partnered up with Travis Scott, who many believe to be partially responsible despite managing to avoid criminal charges, and offered a free month of online therapy to all those affected. Yeah, the sub uh, It just sounds like he knew what he was doing. I'm not surprised that they would try to get in on this even. Sheesh. Remote therapist application in partnership with a negligent rapper who excited a crowd and caused a tragedy are showing how much they care together by basically giving you four free telehealth sessions on an application that breaches your privacy and tries to keep you trapped in a cycle of payments. Mm -hmm. That's really fantastic, guys. Good job. On yeah. top of this, as if that's not already... Plus, sometimes even if people offer you the free trials and all that, right, they still uh, want you to like enter your credit card information even though it is free and then uh, you might forget it afterwards and then they get you they get the charge and then when you notice the first charge and you're all like oh no i gotta you know can cancel this and stuff sometimes if it's very difficult to do that then they get another money because you know it takes time just always be careful if you want to try out something for free that's fine but also if they want your credit card information or if they want way too much information to just try something out for free maybe skip it maybe just maybe already enough to form a judgmental opinion of them there was a bit of a problem with their terms of service according to archives their tos previously contained a segment which said quote we do not control the quality of the counselor services and we do not determine whether any counselor is qualified to provide any specific service yes uh, but they always said that you know their counselors were the best ever and they will definitely help you but they also do not control the quality of counsel service. So, so yeah, that's very dangerous. So anyone just can basically say, oh yeah, I'm definitely a counselor. Just sign up, become a counselor. And then someone that's actually looking for help, you know, who doesn't know any better, go into the service and then they'll just be come across someone that literally has no interest in listening to them or helping them at all and stuff. And then they might feel bad about that, you know, and then they might, even spiral even more because sometimes even if you know you need help right uh, either your pride gets in the way or you just don't believe that someone will actually help you and then when you actually just try to take a step forward in good faith and try to like get the help you need and then this happens like you've come across people that just want your money and will actually not help you at all it's just very disheartening you know and it's it's very scummy you know, it's very disheartening and scummy. And you know what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> what? Now, that particular passage has since been removed, obviously, but it further demonstrates that the company has oh, a really obviously. unstable foundation with the public when it comes to common perception. And their chosen tactic to remedy this is just lots of money. I of already course. talked about how prolific BetterHelp used to be when it comes to YouTube sponsorships, but what I didn't say is that these YouTubers were getting paid something like $100 to $200 per sign-up when they advertised the service. Mm -hmm. Some affiliate websites show a minimum commission of $100 per trial user, 
making it an extremely lucrative Fish? thing to advertise this mental health application and make it seem like a worthwhile service to use. Well, yeah. that was then, and this is now, so what Yeah, but you gotta remember, guys, like, there's always a reason someone takes a sponsorship one way or another, so, you know, whether you believe that the person that took the sponsorship should have done their due diligence or not, you know, you always have to have your own opinion. Even if it's someone whose content you like and you, you think they wouldn't see you wrong, it's not that they're trying to see you wrong, but sometimes people just don't look into it. And maybe the company is just very good at hiding their shady business until a, a huge thing happens and then it blows all over, you know? Just always be mindful of what you're signing up to, who you're giving your information to, and what's happening. Precisely is connecting these two points in time. Answer? BetterHelp is connecting these two points in time because they are exponentially dialing up their advertising, once again, possibly relying on the fact that internet users have a very short attention span and probably hoping to capitalize on a younger demographic of adolescent teenagers and mm -hmm. early young adults who have been aggressively told that their mental health is the most important thing ever in the history of the universe for the majority mm -hmm. of their living lives, making them not only hyper susceptible to this, but also relatively uninformed if they didn't pay attention six years ago when BetterHelp initially encountered controversy on the platform, which was all- True, true. Also, it's not like your mental health is not important, it is. But what makes it important is that it's because, you know, you, well, you're going in through life and living your life and stuff like that, right? Uh, stuff might go well, they might go unwell, but as long as you have your feet planted on the floor, so to say, or at least you feel that you are stable enough to overcome all the waves that might be coming your way, that's good, okay? But if you feel like sometimes it's just very harsh and you can't deal with it all that also can happen and you know you could try to find a different way to deal with those situations okay but unfortunately uh these people just wanted to take advantage of the people that wanted to better themselves which is the huge problem in the first place but despite what they've done don't for a second believe that mental health is not important it is okay and i hope you do take care of your well-being and give yourself some slack once in a while you know, no one can be a more harsher critic to you than yourself, honestly. Also pre-COVID, which allows them to capitalize even further on the dramatically increased tolerance people have for telehealth mm -hmm. and remote medical solutions, which weren't nearly as popular before. Yeah, when then. people weren't According going outside. According to research by The Out Loud Group, BetterHelp went from sponsoring roughly 392 videos in third quarter 2022, up to 636 in first quarter 2023, mm -hmm. 1,237 in the second quarter. That's a huge... 2,000 in the third quarter. Increase, That's a though. pretty massive increase over time, on track to be roughly 10 times higher over the span of just one year. Yeah. And seeing that made me wonder why. Why are they doing this now? And Always what's the reason money. to dial up advertising that much on a platform whose community previously ejected them with very little sympathy? Before going mm -hmm. further, today's video is brought to you by Incogni. Incogni is all about online privacy and data protection. Revenue That's actually been or one something of my hobbies from lately. This, you know, they wouldn't have kept increasing, the, in increasing the sponsorship deals if it wasn't lucrative for them. Every single day, your data is at risk of being sold by third-party brokers or accessed without your knowledge and data breaches. Some people don't care, but they should care. The number of identity theft victims has gone up over 41% since 2021. And for yeah. anyone who wants to prevent well, that you kind must of care thing, if someone can drains your bank your account personal and information you say, who was it? And they say, it was you. And you're like, and not just in the archives of companies you know it? about it or signed me? up for on purpose, uh -huh. but other data firms as well, who then sell and of it course all across it wasn't, the internet. But, you know. For everyday users, it's a nearly impossible task to take any action at all because there are hundreds of these data brokers and it's a lengthy process to contact them, fight objections, and get something removed. Mm -hmm. However, Incogni does all of this for you quickly and easily. Oh, so the process nice you, is Incogni. incredibly simple. Sign up for the website, give them specific legal permission to work on your behalf, and let them know what kind of information they'll be having removed. After that, sit back and just watch them work. Aggregating this kind of service lets them do what would otherwise be an all-consuming and nearly impossible task for individuals, which is why so many people have so much information online that they never even know about. Using the link down below in the description and code ECHELON at checkout, you'll get 60% off an annual subscription to Incogni. I could go into a lot more depth on this. The services they offer and the value they provide is quite large, considering. But for the sake of time, I mm -hmm. have to keep it trimmed. Again, link down below and promo mm, code ECHELON for 60% off your subscription. Big thank you to Incogni for sponsoring the channel. So the question is why? Why would BetterHelp come back and dump that much money into YouTube right now? Well, 
I dug around for a while, no luck here, no luck there, but finally I stumbled on something. Uh -huh. Care Dash. Now, for anyone who doesn't uh -huh. know, which is probably everyone, Care Dash is a platform meant to connect people to various doctors, dentists, and therapists. Mm -hmm. Even though it kind of sounds like DoorDash, and DoorDash doesn't have the best reviews ever, so you know, I don't know. I would be skeptical of believing something called Care Dash, honestly, but mm. I shouldn't say the word is here because Care Dash doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it turns out Care Dash was a fraud scheme that had been posting profiles of, of real physicians, clinicians, and therapists, most importantly, without their knowledge or consent. That mm -hmm. might seem strange, but the incentive is actually very, very straightforward. CareDash would host the profiles of real therapists, but then if someone tried to use their platform to actually book an appointment with that therapist, CareDash would say, oops, sorry, they're not accepting new people right now, Oopsie. and refer that potential customer directly to better help. Try to stay with me here. I learned through an escalated federal lawsuit that CareDash was operated by a company called NewFit Media, and NewFit Media is a multi-million dollar startup funded by a venture mm -hmm. capital firm called Link Ventures. It's got all the typical bells and whistles, world-class partnerships and strong and passionate creative teams, of course, et cetera, of course. et cetera. But Copy if we compress base. it down to a basic point of reference here, CareDash is a multi-million dollar fraud good. platform driving traffic through unauthorized use of therapist profiles to better help, which was shut down in the first quarter of 2023. Hmm. This is where my Chrome window almost crashed completely because I had so many tabs open. And yeah, turns out that. Yeah, I wonder if new fit stands for nothing useful fit. Because, <laughs> you know, obviously they're not helping anyone. That BetterHelp is actually a wholly owned subsidiary acquired by a company called Teladoc in 2015. Of Teladoc is a publicly traded company, thankfully, which means they have to disclose financials. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, I should be able to check what's happening. And presto goes the dynamite. Yes, I can. In the second quarter of 2023, shortly You're after the closure the of CareDash, dynamite, right? which was funneling customers directly to better help through a multi-million dollar startup platform, mm -hmm. and directly before they started exponentially increasing their advertising push on YouTube here, Teladoc disclosed that BetterHelp had roughly 476,000 paying users. However, in the fourth quarter of 2023, as BetterHelp is approaching a 10 times higher amount of advertising on YouTube, Again, mm -hmm. according to research from the Outloud group, Teladoc disclosed that the number of paying users for the platform had actually decreased to 425,000. That oh. may seem small, but it's actually about 50,000 users, and it's over 10% of their entire customer base. From my perspective, based... See, that's what I mean. When numbers start getting too big, you think it uh, doesn't matter when some go, but like, sheesh, that's a lot of people. Indeed. But the fact that they can retain that many people means that not everyone is aware or they just can't get out of uh, pain for better help or they still just believe it when they see like their uh, nice and cozy commercials or ads, right? And they believe that they will help them and then turns out, no, they will not. Based on the information I've collected so far, it seems like the company is desperately trying to make up for the loss of CareDash, which was benefiting them tremendously as a primary user intake method through their affiliate program despite not being directly associated with BetterHelp as a company, and they're bleeding subscribers every single day mm -hmm. as they funnel money back into YouTube, hoping that people have somehow forgotten who they are. That's my guess. I mean, Thankfully, to be there's fair, a couple more pieces of the puzzle do here forget that tie stuff. everything together quite nicely, so yeah, let's go over those before doing a final summary. In okay. July of 2023, BetterHelp was officially charged and penalized for sharing health questionnaire answers and other data with advertisers. It's a paltry sum, to be completely honest, seven point whatever million dollars. Affected users, <laughs> of which there are roughly 800,000, oh, yeah. are getting less than $10 each, while the company seems to spend more on YouTube advertising in a single year than the entire fine demanded that they pay. But regardless, mm -hmm. it gives a foot in the door to see what's really going on. Quote, Despite representing to consumers that BetterHelp would keep consumers' information private and only use their information for non-advertising mm -hmm. purposes, BetterHelp used and disclosed information obtained from consumers through the intake questionnaire and sign-up process for advertising. Exactly. Never answer a questionnaire, people. Don't do anything. <laughs> They're all allowed to get you. If you said your favorite color was pink and all of a sudden you're seeing everything pink, yeah, this probably means someone knows something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
But yeah, no, unfortunately, usually when the people say, oh yeah, we will definitely keep your information private. You, these days, it's like 90% certainty, almost that they will actually uh, sell your information for sure. If they, if they have to like underline it specifically that they will not, won't do it, chances are they will. Because, you know, money. So they lied about the data policies, told their user base, we won't use this information, and then turned around immediately and used it for advertising. Awesome. But it gets better, mm -hmm. or it gets funnier, maybe. That's probably the wrong <laughs> word. These are serious topics, I know. But consider this. In 2018, CEO Alain Matos published a Medium oh. post that said, quote, one of the favorite conspiracy theories was that our business model is selling data to third parties. Mm -hmm. This is such a far-fetched conspiracy that I feel awkward addressing it. Our model is simple. Members sure. pay a fee to get counseling. Counselors are paid to provide counseling. We are in the counseling business, not in the data business. There is nothing. Yeah, and even if you say you're in the counseling business, you don't even vet your counselors, man. What do you mean? <laughs> what kind of counseling business are you in, man? Nothing we take more seriously than the security and privacy of our members. It yeah, also goes sure. without saying that counseling is a strictly regulated space and selling such data would be a gross violation of federal laws, mm -hmm, state mm -hmm. laws, HIPAA regulations, sure, sure. and our own terms and privacy policy, end quote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theory, hardly even worth responding to, I guess, according to one of the founders. But from well, 2013 you know. to 2020, according to the now settled FTC invest Well, technically, if you call anything a, a conspiracy theory, that makes people think, okay, wait a minute, if it's a conspiracy, then how far does it go down the rabbit hole? And then how far do I need to go down the rabbit hole to figure out if it's true or not? But then again, do we even care if it's true or not? I'm just here to think if I can see a conspiracy myself or something. You know, the word conspiracy sometimes can have a very negative meaning to other people. So they just focus on that and then they're all like, eh, they just brush everything else aside, you know? Most likely why he used that word as well investigation docket c4796 the service was quote continually breaking privacy promises monetizing consumers health information to target mm -hmm. them and others with advertisements for the service for example from 2018 to 2020 respondent used these consumers email addresses and the fact that they had previously been in therapy to instruct facebook to identify similar consumers <laughs> and target facebook. them with advertisements for the service mm -hmm. bringing in tens of thousands of new paying users and millions of dollars well, the in revenue as a terror result. of Facebook ever End quote. Oopsie. So BetterHelp is growing just fine while ignoring mm -hmm. basic data protection and privacy. But then after the practice is discontinued and after well, an openly can get away with affiliate of theirs no longer funnels patients to them with fraudulent profiles, Until a certain that's time, when they suddenly take a nosedive and start hemorrhaging customers. Correlation does not necessarily equal causation, but mm -hmm. I mean, come on. It actually goes even deeper. According to an investigation by Jezebel, which monitored traffic from the BetterHelp application and then compared some of it to associated personal data records from Facebook. From the moment the intake questionnaire was filled out, quote, BetterHelp began to silently slip data to dozens of third parties, monitoring our behavior online and signaling to companies like Facebook, Google, Snapchat, and Pinterest that we were considering BetterHelp So is Facebook the down, leader, it tells quote, during a session with a therapist, we found that metadata from every message, though not its contents, was also sent to the social media company, meaning that Facebook knew what time of day we were going to therapy, our approximate location, and how long we were chatting on the app. When we asked about this directly, BetterHelp declined to elaborate on why a social media company needed to know quite so much about when and how we were asking for help, details that were connected to our Facebook profiles and thus our mm -hmm. identities, end quote. That's of course a lot, they deny but it. let's do a summary here. BetterHelp, a prominent and very prolific YouTube sponsor in the 2018 years, was paying enormous affiliate fees and raking in tens of thousands of users until the community caught wind of what they truly were and basically mm -hmm. ousted them. In subsequent years, they collected data from their user base, used and distributed that data illegally to advertise with social media companies, got caught for it, and paid a fine, while also benefiting from the illegal traffic of a man, you do not want to be one of the therapists that are sh being shown as your advertisement for better help. And give you people are trying to let other people know how much of a scam this is and stuff. Yeah. Multi-million dollar medical startup that was impersonating therapists. The FTC busted them mm -hmm. directly for the data. CareDash got taken down by the FTC as well after a complaint by the NASW. And right after all of this happens, BetterHelp starts bleeding tens of thousands of subscribers. 
Meanwhile, they start massively dialing up their YouTube advertising campaigns, including the number of videos that they actively sponsor, because mm -hmm. what? Time to try it all again? Of As course. if the YouTube community isn't going to remember who you are and what you did yeah, on of top of the other stuff People you just forget. did in the meantime while trying to make a comeback? Really? That's the plan? I can't say for sure, and I don't have absolute certainty, but what I see is a company trying to weasel its way back into the ecosystem, and I'm not having it. Please let mm -hmm. people know, please make other creators aware that while sponsorships are perfectly fine, of course, I do understand people need money. Yeah. If they can, it's probably best to find a sponsor that's a little bit more reputable than BetterHelp, because pretty much any YouTube sponsor is more reputable than BetterHelp. Well, I don't normally ask this, but please share. No, not any uh sponsor honestly because we also had that other thing with the lords and the ladies <laughs> but yes 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 of course any other sponsorship is reputable yes it's basically just try to do as much research as you can uh before you accept the sponsorship and then be known for that sponsorship you did in your own community share the video around if you want to support, there's links down below. Protect your data with Incogni, kind of a perfect sponsor for this one. Locals and Patreon sure. yeah. for monthly memberships, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching. Question everything, and have a nice night. Yeah, question everything. My question: Why is this even a giraffe? Who knows? Am I watching a fake giraffe? Who knows? I could be. You know, I could be watching a fake giraffe indeed. Why is the giraffe fake? Oh, no. All jokes aside, though. Okay, so they tried it at 2018. So then four years later, they're trying it slowly in 2022. Then they increased it a bit more in 2023. And in 2024, it's still probably ongoing and stuff like that. So yes, people do forget. I mean, in all honesty, I'm just surprised they took like four years to come back. You know, they could have come back in like two years, one year. I don't know. Because sometimes even if people get aware of stuff right it take maybe in like a year people forget that that ever happened and they ever talked about it because you know it doesn't really last that long as a topic maybe it lasted a week maybe it lasted a month something and then they just totally forgot about it because that's what happens you know, your life keeps going on you have other things to focus on you most likely just forget what it was and what happened and which is perfectly normal that's what people bank on okay your forgetfulness is what others bank on it's sometimes when you see like scam artists even if they're known as scam artists and like they don't really change their names or much anything else they still come back and try to sell people stuff and then they still make money and then uh, when people find out that guy was the same guy that did that thing to the other people there guess what they get away with them <laughs> you know and then nothing really happens about it because people just don't do the research they just believe what um they see i mean you don't have to doubt everything but you need to be able to doubt enough to try to either find if something is true or not and you know at least that will help you sleep better at night you know and also just be careful who you give your money to who you give your information to because sometimes you know even your banks are like okay we will try to help you cancel this and then the they fight against your bank or you just don't feel like you want to talk to your bank about this because you're not good with phone calls or like even messages or emails and stuff which is you know happens not everyone prefers to call someone or like go to the bank themselves and you know ask for help or something even though you know you're on the right to do that but you know it's just like an extra step for you or you just don't want to have that kind of interaction because you don't want people to think that you've been stupid enough to like do something like this or like sign up to something and then you got caught with it and stuff as but no 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 it's it's your money okay protect your money people so if you need help canceling stuff just reach out to your bank if you can try to cancel it on your own if you can and make sure no other charges are being done to you from something else as well you know always keep track of what's happening because that is one way or another the money you earned and you know it's easier to uh, for people to say ah it's okay you know i earned like maybe three thousand and i lost maybe like a hundred sure uh -huh. sure it might not like seem like a lot to you but you know the fact that that went isn't a good thing either i just wanted to react to this video especially because uh, since they're coming back and they're trying to be even more and they're trying to spread uh, even more sponsorships and stuff just be aware guys okay no matter who uh, you see sponsoring this, even if it's a YouTuber you really like their content and stuff, just 
yeah, just don't sign up to BetterHelp. It's, it's just going to be a hassle more than anything, and they're not really going to help you, sadly. But don't think that your mental health is not important, and just try to find something that is actually it. And remember, take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you in another video. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye. Thank you.